there, this is Kimberly Wilson, and welcome to the 462nd edition of Tranquility Du Jour, bringing you tranquility since 2005. Tranquility Du Jour is a series of nourishing conversations about living life with more tranquility. From style tips and wellness tools to ideas on mindfulness and self care, let's connect over compassion and creativity. In this week's edition of Tranquility Du Jour, I chat about my time in Italy and how to incorporate La Dolce Vita, the sweet life, at home. I'm also sharing a lot of your fabulous ideas on how to live La Dolce Vita. So those of you who are signed up for my mailing list, which you can do so at KimberlyWilson.com slash love notes, and this gives you access, by the way, to exclusive content, personal updates, giveaways, and also access to Tranquil Treasures, which is filled with PDFs, MP3s, and more. So anyway, last week, while I was in Lucca, Italy... Uh, leading a Tranquility in Tuscany retreat, I sent a love note and asked people, how do you live La Dolce Vita in everyday life? And I received such wonderful responses. So I have compiled a lot of them and look forward to sharing them with you today. And before we dive into this, I wanted to share a few things. One is if you have a moment to pen a review on iTunes about this podcast, I'd be so grateful and I may even read it on the show. So today what I wanted to share is an iTunes review and an Amazon review of the latest day book. All right. So Jay Barship wrote on July 1st, 2019. Tranquility du jour, insightful, entertaining, and actionable. Kimberly and her guests give listeners an unfair advantage when it comes to creating the business and life of their dreams. I feel completely at home here, bowled over by brilliant advice and nourishing conversations. Tranquility du jour is a must-listen for anyone interested in exploring their own personal and professional evolution and development. Highly recommend listening and subscribing. Thank you so much, Jay. That makes me so happy to hear. And I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. So I wanted to also read an Amazon review about the latest day book, Tranquility Du Jour Day Book, A Life and Day Planner. So on 2018, Linda wrote, and Linda, not my mom, (laughs) I have searched for a planner that I can use daily that is not so business looking, but more feminine and useful. This day book reminds me to set my goals, have dreams, that life isn't about only the eight to five and makes me stop and think about how I want to move forward. I just love it, and it will be my planner going forward. Thank you so much, Linda, and thank you to everyone who's taken the time to pen a review on Amazon or on iTunes, Goodreads, and beyond. I really appreciate it. Also, if you have a take a moment... Also, if you have a moment to take a screenshot of you listening to the show and post it, tag TDJ Podcast. I'm going to start collecting these images and also sharing these. So I know we have listeners from all over during the La Dolce Vita um, love note subscriber kind of question that I sent out last week. I heard a lot of you from Australia. So thank you so much, you guys, for tuning in. And I remind you, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast app to Tranquility Du Jour. And if you visit KimberlyWilson.com slash podcast, you'll find more episodes and even our very own app there. So let's dive in. What I wanted to do before I share a bit about La Dolce Vita is tell you a little bit about some of the highlights that we had. So some of you may know that we were traveling. It was Tim, my partner, my mom, and my dad from Oklahoma. So it was my dad's first time to Europe, my mom's first time to Italy. And we were there for nearly two weeks. And we began in Venice. And I will say that Venice, I'm sure many of you have been there or most of you know, it is truly, truly magical. There's just something about it that 
is incredibly sweet, incredibly special. And it's all these canals. Now, you may know this, and I had forgotten this because I hadn't been for 25 years, but there are no motorized vehicles. There are no bikes. There are no scooters. So even for people to transport bottled water, Amazon packages, you see people pushing carts and they have to go up and over the stairs. They go up and over the mini canals. So honestly, it's a bit of a hard way to live and it can be a bit of a hard way to travel because you are lugging your suitcase over all these canals, getting to your destination of a hotel or an Airbnb or what have you. And um, so that was interesting because it was like we were having trouble getting to the train station at the end in order to get to Luca for me to lead the retreat. And, you know, it's funny. It's not like you can just be like, oh, let me just get a taxi or let me just get an Uber. It's like, no, 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 no. Um, there is a bus taxi, but you have to reserve in advance. So no last minute sort of situations. So it's kind of nice, right? Because things are so slowed down. And the fact that like, there's no rushing, there's no fast moving vehicles around you. It's really, really sweet and so unique. And so one of the highlights, well, a few of the highlights, but one of my favorite things that we did was to go to the world's oldest coffee house. It's called the Florian and it's in St. Mark's Square. So the funny thing is, is I had passed it a few times, you know, taking even video of the musicians playing, oh my gosh, La Vie in a Rose. It was just gorgeous, right? So I had done that and then I got a note on Instagram of someone saying when you should go to Cafe Florian. And so I Googled it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been to this, but I haven't been inside of it. It is stunning. It's like a little mini Versailles inside. So beautiful. So we had a lovely high tea. Uh, Tim got a cocktail. It was like 30 euros. Um, you know, it's like my mom and dad. I can't even remember what they got. My dad probably got like iced tea or something. But, you know, it was just like this really sweet experience. And the live music, it was, and in St. Mark's Square. So those of you who ever go to Venice, definitely check it out or just Google it just to get the beautiful, beautiful images. Another thing we did was to go to Torcello. Murano and Murano. Now, Murano, you've probably heard of because that's all about the glass blowing there. And you can buy lots of beautiful glass blown objects. I'll tell you the two things that I saw there that I was like, oh, these would be really nice. I didn't buy anything from Murano or any of the glass products, but there was this, there were beautiful chandeliers, which were stunning, not easy to get back in your suitcase. And also beautiful mirrors that were framed with this gorgeous ornate glass. So pretty. And so that was really fun. And then Barano is where they make lace. Oh my gosh. When I grew up, I was obsessed with Battenberg lace. I just always loved it. And so to see it freaking made in person and all the effort it takes, it was just, was blown away. We really liked that town too. And it's a big fisherman's town. So there are all these houses that are colored, all these bright, bright colors. And the idea was like that it helped fishermen find their way back in the fog to their home, which I just loved it. I mean, pink homes, green, red, yellow, just gorgeous. And then Torcello was very cool because it's the oldest settlement. And now there are only about 13 to 16 people still living there. But it has a couple restaurants. It has a and b that I actually read that Hemingway had stayed at. And of course, it has a church. And so it's more that tourists kind of stop by there. But it's just absolutely beautiful. So those were a few highlights from our Venice adventure. And really, it was just a lot about exploring, wandering. I mean, we would get, you know, easily throughout this trip, 10,000, 11,000 steps a day without trying. And so that was really nice. And also sitting in the piazzas and the squares and having dinner and, you know, and it was just a, a really, Venice is a very sweet, sweet place. And then next we headed to Luca, where I led my week-long Tranquility in Tuscany retreat. Podcast listeners who joined me, thank you so much. I loved, loved, loved being with you. The retreat included 
yoga classes every day, mindfulness practices, the exploration of those, incorporation of them, and then creativity every day. Also, where we explored art journaling, uh, writing a manifesto, creating a visual representation of what we want the rest of 2019 to look like. So that was a really sweet experience. And to see people who have never done it before really come to life playing with it. It is fun. It's super duper fun. And then the last piece or the other piece that I wanted to mention with uh, Luca is Puccini was born there. And so we went and saw an opera. It was about 70 minutes. I posted some video of that over on my Instagram stories and Facebook stories. So some of you may have seen those. And one of our singers was blind. And I tell you, he it was it was a male and a female. And the male was, oh my gosh, like you you know when you hear music and you have an emotional reaction, which I know many of you probably do regularly, but I was blown away. A, I had no idea what he was saying, right? It's an Italian. And then B, it was just like his voice and his uh, projection. It was just like, oh my gosh, so, so beautiful. And then also some people went on a little wine tour of a local winery. And then also we went to a day trip to Cinque Terre, which was just wonderful. And then on Friday, I went into Luca and did a little bit of exploring, which was just really, really sweet. It's a it's a great town. Some of you may have seen the New York Times article that was like, for, you know, skip these six cities, like the big cities, and go to these instead. And so one of them was like, skip Florence and go to Luca. Okay, so at the end, we say our goodbyes. It's like so sweet sad to say goodbye to all these beautiful souls. Many, you know, a few of them have been on up to six retreats with me. So my hope is I'm going to see them again. So it wasn't goodbye forever, but it's goodbye for a while, right? And you know, it was so fun too. Although my dad didn't participate in the programming, to see my dad come to life, right? With smiles and laughs. I'm like, he has smiled and laughed more in this week than he has my entire 46 years. And he even one morning got up to watch the sunrise with a couple of the ladies. And they got up at like 530 to go up on this beautiful hillside where we would do yoga sometimes to watch the sunrise. And it was just like, oh, my gosh, dad, that's amazing. He really came out of his shell. It was so fun to see him come alive in that way and to really have such a joyful experience. So we said our goodbyes. We headed to Florence and we really just had one day in Florence. So we headed there on Saturday. And then Tim and I left Sunday morning and we got back after 18 hours of travel that ranged from, you know, layovers to uh, delays when we landed at Dulles Airport. We had to sit in the plane for an extra hour because of lightning. You know, it's just like so many different things. And, you know, we had two flights, one to Lisbon, which was three hours, and then one from uh, Lisbon to D.C., which was eight hours. It was quite the journey. And uh, and yeah, it feels so good also to be home. What I'm going to be really really excited about is to be united with my puppies who will be coming back shortly. Um, Two of them have been up in New York with Tim's parents. So their grandparents, they were at Camp Grandparents for two weeks and I miss Gizmo like crazy. And then, uh, and of course, Belle. And then Mookie, we picked up from daycare, but then Tim snagged him, took him up to see his parents before uh, heading back with the other two. So it's been just, uh, you know, a whirlwind of uh, logistics, right? Of management of three dogs, two that don't get along, one that's super attached to Tim and, you know, the whole shebang. But I will just say one more thing, like that Florence, you know, I was blown away. I have not been in Florence either or to Florence since uh, for 25 years, since I backpacked in uh, 1995 there. And so it's, I guess, 24 years. But still, it was, you know, I was blown away. I'd forgotten about really how magical it is. So I don't know that I would say skip Florence and go to Luca, like the New York Times said. I would definitely encourage checking out Florence if you have the opportunity. We did a walking tour. As soon as we got there and then we ate and, you know, basically called it a day because it was quite a day of travel also with the trains. And um, and yeah, then back Sunday and then I've been back to seeing clients uh, since Monday morning. And uh, I have to say, I really miss my clients too. So it's been so fun to be back to them. Although it's kind of a shock to the system to have been in freaking Italy, right, where you see things that were created in BC and then you're like, Back to D.C., which is very, very different. So not that one is better than the other. It's just a bit of a culture shock, so to speak. 
All right, so let's chat La Dolce Vita. Okay, so many of you have probably heard this saying or you have uh, read about it or read books titled it or seen seen movies. So La Dolce Vita is considered like the sweet life, right? So one of the things that I shared in last week's love note is I said there is a sweetness here that infuses the lifestyle. Small cars, Lots of bikes. Okay, clearly this is outside of Venice, right? This was once we were in Luca. I wrote this. Love of steaming libations in tiny cups. At one point, my dad is like, why are the cups so tiny? Right? He's used to Oklahoma where everything is super sized. I was like, that's not how they do it in Italy. Um, Late night gatherings in the piazzas. Love of art and beauty. Oh, one other thing we did in Venice is we went to go see the Peggy Guggenheim Museum, which was amazing. So love of art and beauty. Oh my gosh, they do this well. Appreciation of music and wine. Delight in conversation. Evening strolls. Olive oil on everything. And I found my favorite new olive oil, which is pepperoncini, which has this, I like spice, it's like spicy olive oil. Long lunches fashion, love of family, you know, family is so important, delight in local food, stop and smell the roses pace. And you may know this, but Italy is where the slow movement began because somebody wanted to bring a McDonald's near the Spanish steps in Rome and Italians were not having it. Living with less, right? So it's not, I I didn't see this sense of like accumulation of wanting more, more, more. It's like, how do I live with less? I live in a tall space. I have to take everything over canals in a cart. If I, I mean, can you imagine moving in Venice? Oh my gosh, I mean, how do you do that? And passion for food, massive passion for food. Um, olives and pasta, I ate so much of that. And pizza, I'm like filled with it right now. I'm bread, 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 bread. So the sweet life, La Dolce Vita. Okay, so what I did is I asked readers, like, how do you live it? And I want to share an assortment of feedback that I got that is really sweet and beautiful. And my hope is that it will help you also incorporate this sense of living La Dolce Vita in the country, in Australia, in the city, you know, wherever you are, we could all incorporate a little of this. So Michelle says, I live La Dolce Vita by snuggling my dog in the morning, followed by savoring my favorite morning tea. Morning tea and pets were a big thing, a big theme throughout these. Uh, Jennifer wrote a whole manifesto about La Dolce Vita. And she a few things that she said is travel like a local, avoid gossip and complaining, trust but verify, magic is something you make. Lorraine says, stopping to watch butterflies in my garden with a cup of tea each morning. Amanda spoke about her new baby, and she says, spending all my time with her every day is a constant reminder of the old adage, the days are long, but the years are short. I'm so grateful to her for encouraging me to have a new zest for life. And I'm also learning Italian while breastfeeding. Sandy said, La Dolce Vita for me, family gatherings, salty air and sea, sunshine, gray winter days, espresso and strong black tea, music, ballet, art, and great books. Melinda, I bring La Dolce Vita by spending time in the garden while the dogs keep me company and then making a simple meal with the harvest. Anna says a really good cup of coffee, not rushed in a travel mug, but to take a few minutes, brew my coffee, sit down, enjoy its aroma, and then partake of its essence. Brie, since my son is three, we spend our nights chasing fireflies, which I haven't done since I was a kid. It really is the little things. Hillary, one thing I'm trying is to cook more with the help of a mill prep delivery kit. I'm also preparing more balanced and healthy meals and enjoying the slow process. It always takes me 1.5 times as long as they say it will. And I love that, Hillary. I totally hear you. Um, Laura, it reminded me that I truly am the one that makes me. I've supported so many others in my life, been through turmoil, still suffer from depression, but I walk through centuries of buildings captivated when the history, the truly blissful, almost quiet life of Italy, I knew that was what I wanted to capture for myself and the other half of my life. 
It's not easy we here in the States. Still have a need for new, faster, bigger, etc. And we also dismiss people as they get older, like myself. But I close my eyes, take myself back to Italy, to the stones, the history, to the rolling hills. And I am happy that I have that memory. Mora. My strategies for living La Dolce Vita have changed through the years, but today it is very much focused on appreciating every moment of life, feeling the emotions that accompany those moments, and not identifying them as good or bad, just feeling. Laura, I try to find daily moments to wander, wonder, and daydream. Allison, I've infused La Dolce Vita this year by making my small balcony a bit of an urban oasis with flowers, herbs, and hopefully some veggies soon. Nicole, bringing a little La Dolce Vita into my life by sipping the most delightful iced herbal teas and wearing handmade beaded bracelets with meaningful stones to remind me of the beauty and grace of living. Lynn, morning coffee. Choosing an Earth Magic Oracle card at random and read, ponder the message. Making a healthy vegan smoothie. Going for a 30-minute walk and listening to a podcast. Jacqueline, I love the slow, sweet life too. Some of the ways I incorporate La Dolce Vita into my East Coast USA life. Make as many things with my own hands as I can. Art, clothing, meals. In-person conversations over lovely beverages when possible. Lots and lots of reading books and writing longhand. Long, lingering meals. Good rest and sleep. Lots of walking to commute. Yoga and meditation every day. Kim, I am learning at 47 years old to find the beauty in every day, especially taking joy in cooking and eating in a slow, relaxed manner. Kathleen sent me a photo of her La Dolce Vita, and it was a photo of a table with candles, wine, tablecloth, cloth linens. Like, it was just a beautiful spread. Heather, deep breaths, breeze through the open windows, sitting outside and reading, even if only for a few minutes. A few moments to slow down and check in with my senses. Amanda, I enjoy the simple things to make life sweet. Helping at my friend's produce farm, reading in the quiet morning, and lighting a candle. Allison, I'm very conscious that the little moments are what make life so sweet. I've recently slowed down from the rushing around in the morning before work to savor my coffee out of my ceramic mug made by a local artisan. Carrie, La Dolce Vita every day. With flowers, fancy teas, especially ice right now, and with my breath. Breathing reminds me to slow down. Hika, La Dolce Vita for me is early morning sunrises, birds singing and fresh coffee, taking time with a crossword puzzle in the garden, hanging out with our horses and chickens also helps. Rose, I do live the sweet life, golf, many exercise classes, afternoon coffee, etc. Time just flows. Caitlin, one thing I'm doing right now is having an evening cup of chamomile and lavender tea where I get cozy in bed and read or listen to an audiobook or journal or something else and snuggle with my dog. It's often a combination. Linda, I live La Dolce Vita every day by having an afternoon balanced protein carb muffin or a ball with a cup of coffee or espresso with almond milk and stevia. It's my quiet blessing. Donna, daily walks on a white sand beach, an evening mocktail with lavender syrup, and watching a gorgeous sunset. And then last but not least, Laura, I live La Dolce Vita by practicing yoga in some form every day and have loving daily rituals I incorporate and have loving daily rituals that I incorporate into my life. Plus, like you, I am an animal advocate having worked in the veterinary industry for 14 years. I have two dogs and I love them. So interesting themes throughout this, right? I mean, lots of cups of tea or coffee, um, lots of animals. And, um, you know, and also just the reminder of the appreciation of the sweet moment. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to share. So savvy sources, I wanted to just remind you, takeaways, I would love to hear what are some of your takeaways from La La Dolce Vita? And 
Can you share them? Maybe take a photo of them or share in some way and use hashtag TDJ podcast. What is your version or vision of La Dolce Vita? And what are your takeaways from today's podcast? Also, a reminder to please share a review on iTunes or Amazon, and I'd love to read it on the show. And then finally, let me announce the dates for the next retreat. Okay, so this is for the planners, right? So this is a bit of a ways away. In 2021, which is two years from now, August 28th through September 4th, we're going to be back to Il Borghino in Lucca, Italy, that private villa that we were at last week, and I'll be hosting a retreat there. So I'll have more information on that as things unfold. You can check it out and learn more at KimberlyWilson.com slash Italy. And last but not least, a reminder about Year of Tranquility, my latest book that came with five bonuses is still available on Amazon along with the Tranquility Du Jour Daybook. Thank you so much to those of you who tuned in and joined me for the launch of the Daybook at the end of June. Such a treat. You can find me on social, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, which is at Tranquility Du Jour. And then also there is a link to the summer Tranquility Du Jour Live recording. So make sure to save the date for our upcoming Tranquility Du Jour Live, which is happening in September. That will be our next one on Sunday, September 15th. So thank you as always for tuning in. And it's a joy to be with you. And I wish you a week filled with moments of La Dolce Vita. Thank you.